Hello friends, welcome back. Now today's topic of discussion is gravitation. Now let us understand what is gravity. Uh, I have this marker in my hand and if I leave it, it falls. When we say it falls, it falls in which direction? Does it fall in this direction or that direction or this direction? Obviously no. It falls in the downward direction. So when we say downward, it is towards earth, towards ground, correct? So then there must be some force with which earth must be attracting it towards itself and that is what is, um, you know, that is what was discovered by Newton. He discovered it, gravity was still there before he uh, saw that apple falling down and even after that, correct? So now when we talk about this gravitational force, uh, it would be interesting to know that it is a non-contact force. Now what is a non-contact force? A force which, uh, uh, you know, which, which, which comes into picture even without any physical contact between the bodies. For example, this again marker, I just leave it, correct? I just leave it and it falls down. Is there any contact of earth with this marker? No. Or then I have a magnet here or um, I'll have two magnets, two bar magnets like this and north pole here and north pole here, correct? And then they tend to repel each other. We have also seen that two positive charges or negative for that matter, suppose both are positive, they repel. I have one positive charge and one negative charge. They attract each other. Now in each case, the force, now here the mag force between two poles of a magnet or force between two like or unlike charges, these forces exist even without having any physical contact with the bodies. Likewise, my gravitational force is also a non-contact force. Now, if you compare this force with uh, force of friction, for force of friction, there has to be contact between the mass and the surface on which it is kept, isn't it? So, that is the fundamental difference between uh, gravitational force and other forces. Okay. Now, again, uh, if I have a force of gravity, then there has to be some region of influence. Now, what is region of influence? Region of influence is the, it, it, it is called gravitational field. Now, again, when we say region of influence, that means it is the region up to which the force is existent. Right? For example, again, I have these two magnets here. Okay. These magnets are, these, these poles are, let us say, 10 centimeter apart. And then I experience this force of repulsion here. These charges, they are 10 centimeters apart and I experience this force of repulsion here. Okay, force of attraction here. But then, if I increase the distance between them, okay, if I take this magnet over here, then you know there may not uh, uh, there may not be anything interesting happening over there the force of repulsion may still be there but then that force may be too weak to be experienced isn't it so that means when the objects are close to each other the force is stronger when the objects are uh, at far uh, far off distance from each other the force is not that strong you won't even uh, realize that there exists any force of that kind. Correct. So that is something which we need to note here. Okay. Now another thing about force of gravitation here is uh, it is independent of the material medium prevailing between the uh, two masses. But then if you compare that with a magnetic force or electrostatic force here, if I have some material medium separating these two charges okay then the force experienced by both the charges would be different 
if the if both the charges are kept in vacuum i'll have certain amount of force if i keep both the charges in some other medium okay like it can be in water or it can be in oil or there can be some asbestos right some 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 insulating material separating the two charges in do in each of these cases the force is going to be different and that would depend on nature of the medium separating the two charges or the two poles of this magnet in gravitation nothing like that happens so gravitational force is independent of any material medium that prevails between the two masses now having discussed this um uh, we need to have a uh, we need to state a law for this gravitation right so now we will try and state this law the statement is now listen carefully the statement is every particle of matter attracts every other particle of matter with a force which is directly proportional to product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them so i would say force of gravity fg is directly proportional to product of masses m1 and m2 now here m1 and m2 are my masses they are separated by a distance let us say r here and they experience a force of attraction that is fg and that fg is proportional to product of masses and it is inversely proportional to square of distance between them so if i combine both these statements both these proportionality statements i can as well write it as m1 m2 over r square and then now if i have to convert this into a mathematical equation then i would introduce some constant of proportionality and that would be f is equal to g m1 m2 upon r square now this g is nothing but universal gravitational constant right now its si uh, its 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 value is 6.67 into 10 raised to power minus 11 now units would be newton meter square per kg square now you know the base uh, base si units of newton correct so then you can very easily convert this uh, uh, unit of universal gravitational constant into its base si units right so let us come back to this f is equal to g m1 m2 upon r square now when we talk about weight of a body okay is it not the force exerted by earth on the body right and we know that my weight is equal to mg correct so now uh, if we if we take mass of earth as big m here my mass of earth is m mass of object is m correct radius of earth is capital r here correct so that means uh my weight mg is it not going to be equal to the gravitational force of attraction between that mass and earth so in place of m1 and m2 i am going to put this m and m so it is going to be equal to g m m upon r square so now if i cancel this small m over here my value of g is going to be g m upon r square now this value of g uh g is acceleration of free fall okay and we take its value as 9.81 meter per second square now that value can be calculated from this expression now i know the value of g that is capital g it is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square mass of earth is about 6 into 10 to the power 24 kg and radius of earth at the equator it is 6378 km and that 6378 km you know we can uh, approximate to 
6400 kilometer so that would be 6.4 into 10 to the power 6 meter correct so if i substitute those values here i can get value of g and that would be i am not going to calculate right now here but then that would be somewhere around 9.776 um, something like that okay that is the value of g at equator now uh, meter per second square so that was about g so now here uh, we have something more to do with this okay and what is that we are going to consider the motion of moon around earth or motion of earth around sun correct why does moon revolve around earth the reason is it is because of the necessary centripetal force provided by the force gravitational force of attraction between moon and earth correct what about the rotation of earth revol rev revolving earth earth revolving around the sun it is because of force of gravitational attraction between sun and earth correct and that force is providing the centripetal force so now why doing circular motion we know that uh, centripetal force is mv square upon r correct so now in case of moon or in case of any uh, satellite which is orbiting around earth right of course in a circular orbit my radius of orbit is going to depend on the radius of earth and the distance of that satellite from the earth surface now let us take one uh, example here i'm going to remove this part this is my earth and there is this orbit of the satellite the satellite is here let us say and its mass is m and capital m is the mass of earth radius of earth is capital r and distance of this satellite above earth's surface it is h so now what is the radius of the orbit radius of orbit r is equal to r plus h right and uh, what about the velocity the velocity of this satellite it is v mass of satellite is m correct so and then let us find out the gravitation force of attraction and we will equate it with the centripetal force so m v square over r is equal to g m m upon r square now can i cancel this r yes i can cancel this r with this square sign here and this m on both the sides so my v square is equal to g m upon r so my v is going to be equal to g m upon r plus h and root of that now this velocity with which the satellite revolves or it orbits around the earth that is called orbital velocity of the satellite or it is also called critical velocity now the reason for uh, that name critical velocity is uh, it, it is that if it has to revolve in a circular orbit then the velocity has to be equal to this if it is less than that what happens if it is slightly less than that it will still revolve around the earth but then the orbit would be elliptical now if it is very 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 much less than this value then the satellite would follow what kind of profile it would follow it would follow a parabolic path okay and it will definitely crash down so that was about velocity being equal to the critical velocity and less than critical velocity but what about velocity being greater than critical velocity if it is marginally greater than critical velocity then the satellite would perf uh, perform you know its motion in an elliptical orbit okay if it is you know fairly greater than critical velocity fairly greater than this value okay then it would again follow parabolic path and then that would you know it would kind of escape if it is greater than that right but then if it, if it is far far greater than that then it will definitely escape and 
uh, we would simply lose the satellite. It won't orbit around Earth. Correct. So these are the possible cases in satellite launching. But then basically, what do I need for a satellite to, launch, to be launched? I'm here with my satellite and I want that satellite to orbit like this in the circular orbit. So in the first place, I have to take this satellite from here to here. So first of all, I have to reach that height h. Now once it reaches that height h, then so it reached this height. Now from this height, now it has to move like this tangentially. Correct? I'll give some tangential velocity to the satellite so that it moves in a, uh, in, a in a circular orbit. So obviously for launching a satellite, I would need a rocket which has got minimum two stages. So what happens? This is my rocket. Uh, it has got these two stages, stage one and stage two. And my satellite is here. My first stage fires. What happens? It takes the satellite to the desired height, this height. Okay. Now we are sitting in the space station here. Okay. We are sitting in our office. Now what we will do is we will take the remote control and with remote control, we will detach this first stage. Okay. And with remote control, I'll turn this second stage through 90 degrees. And then this second stage would be like this and satellite is like this. Okay. And now my second stage gets fired and it gets this velocity V here. Correct. And then the satellite starts orbiting the earth. Correct. This critical velocity, this velocity which we give to the satellite is very important. And that is the reason it is called critical velocity or orbital velocity. Now in the next video we are going to talk in detail uh, about the escape velocity and uh, the acceleration of free fall at a particular height because see the satellite is you know it is orbiting at a particular height above a surface earth's gravitational force is acting on that but then we would be definitely interested in knowing at you know what is the value of uh, acceleration of free fall at that point all that we'll be seeing in the next video. Thank you so much.